Good to see you here today. We greet you in Jesus' name from New Life Christian Assembly here in Haverhill, Massachusetts. I'm Pastor Rick, and this is Ella V. Ella Victory, and uh, we'll be with you for the next 30 minutes or so, sharing the Word of God and some thoughts and so forth. Well, Ella has something rather unusual today to share. Um, as she usually, so I, sh I shouldn't say. Unu it's always unusual, yeah, which sorry, unusual sorry. is now usual. Uh, but I wanted to start by, uh, well, first of all, hi, hi Tony and Angela. Uh, good to see you both on here. Uh, I want to share a couple of scriptures uh, as, a, as an introduction today. So, Ella, why don't you open up with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the word. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. I hope you send your angels down there to protect us and to comfort us. And I hope you sing your song all for us. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, Hebrews 3.14, uh, if you want to turn there, you can, or you can just listen to me and read it to you. And then we're going to get into a little study here. But let me read a couple of scriptures. Hebrews 3.14 says, For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Hello, Gail Zanke from Tennessee. Uh, so Hebrews 3.14. We have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. So that little phrase, the beginning of our confidence, that, that means when we first put our confidence and our faith into Jesus Christ. So we become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our faith, the beginning of our commitment to Christ steadfast to the end. Now, I don't need to tell you. That, that being steadfast to the end, and we never know when the end is going to be, but um, we're in a battle, we're in, a, we're in like a fight, and uh, I want to talk about that just for a few minutes. So if you have your, your Bible, as Ella's getting ready to share some thoughts, but 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, Paul writes this, very interesting little passage. I have two more after this, then we'll get into uh, the devotional part. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. In other words, well, live your life according to God's standards so that you could get the prize at the end. Everyone who comp competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Um, now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we, we Christians, we're temperate, we're careful, we're, 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 we're conscientious of all the things we do, and we do it for an imperishable crown. Hmm. Hello, Gigi. Good to see you. Speaking of presents, you know what? Yesterday was Wednesday, right? Correct. Of course, you know, last Thursday, Josh. <laughs> right. We have swimming on Wednesday, right? Yes, yes. And so yesterday was the last day of swimming, 
Yeah. And we got a prize. What did you you did? Yeah, what for finishing the class? We got to pick out a like a present as a prize. Where did you pick? Well, there was like frisbees and squishies. I got a purple narwhal squishy. Purple what? Narwhal. Narwhal. Like a, it's like a whale dolphin thingy with a horn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack got a frisbee and Ava got a pink narwhal squishy. Well, that's very special. You got a prize for completing the swimming class. Yeah. Well, the Lord says we, we have a crown awaiting for us if we run the race accordingly. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Paula. Good to see you both on here today. Paula, uh, so sorry to hear about your father-in-law's passing. Uh, I've been in touch with Bob and Valerie, and uh, our prayers and thoughts are with you. But thank the Lord, Mr. Cantanzaro is with the Lord right now. Amen. All right, uh, so we're 1 Corinthians 9, 26. Therefore, I run, I run like this, not with uncertainty, Thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Uh, so Paul is saying, you know, we, we're running a race, we're in a battle. Uh, let me read what he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.5. He, uh, he writes to Timothy also, anyone, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. So applicable for us, we've got to uh, compete according to the rules. The verse above that says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So we are a soldier for the Lord, but we, we compete according to the rules. One more scripture, uh, Romans 8.13, and uh, Romans 8.13 says, If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, you, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. And so the battle we're in, um, the battle that we're in is a spiritual battle against good and bad, right and wrong, uh, being in light, being in dark. And I have to tell you, there, there's, there's a pull uh, into the dark world all the time through media, through people, through the culture that we live in, uh, through the worldly system that we live in. But we're in this fight to, to rise above it. And, uh, and with God's help, we, we can rise above it. Okay, let's see here. Oh, I froze up. Let me see what's going on with all that. Well, I'm connected to the thing really good. I don't know why we would be freezing. Uh, everyone's, everyone's frozen, or we're frozen, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that would be. I mean, our connection here is hardwired right in. If you, if you have trouble now, by the end of this video, just after we post it, try again. There you go. And they can watch the recording of it, right? Yeah. All right. Let me just write a little note here. I'm just going to say... spelled here wrong. Hey, hell no. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. All right. So anyway, I hope you could hear us and see us and hope we're not frozen. Uh, someone, someone let me know how, how we're doing here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we are hardwired in. So I don't think it's at this end. We're in. Everything's connected good. So I don't know what's going on. All right, so Ella, what do you have? You have something to share about all that? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. First of all, I'm going to tell you a story. It's not really a story, but I'm just going to read the thing I wrote. Okay. Let me push you up a little bit. There you go. How's that? Good. So, I was in 
to Karate Tuesday. So I go to karate, but karate isn't like judo. It's different. So just keep that in mind. I don't know the difference. Well, karate is more like self-defense, I think, isn't it? Judo is more like throwing. Oh, I guess. tumbling and stuff like that. Like karate is different than that. Okay. I don't know how to explain it. So right. I went to Karate Tuesday, and I, so I, we got to choose weapons to learn the whole, oh. so this is like a, like a homeschool class, because we're homeschool, right. so we went to like a homeschool class, and we, so by the end of the school year, in June, that's when the um, karate finishes. Okay. So every Tuesday I go. And so my weapon, so there was a sword, nunchucks, and a, I don't even know how, I think it's boa staff or it's bow staff. I think oh. it's bow staff. <laughs> uh, good. Thank you, Tony. Well. All right, so wait, wait. What, what are there three types of things? What are they again? Um, a sword. A like sword. You learn how to do not like fighting. Like it's a performance. You oh. Learn how to perform. Uh, and what else? And nunchucks. Nunch order nunchucks. Nunchucks are like things that are attached to like. Oh yeah, like two little pieces of something, and they attach with a wire or yeah. a chain or something, and you swing them around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And the other thing was a what boa. Boa staff. staff. Okay. I think it's bow staff or boa staff. Okay. I have no idea how to pronounce it, but B O staff. That's how it's spelled. B O and then staff. So I'm gonna just call it a bow staff. Okay. That's what I've been calling it. So I learned the boa staff actually. Bo I learned you, the bow. You might have said bow. Yeah, bow staff. I think Hey, maybe your mommy can come in here and make sure with something's not wrong, but something's not. Maybe. Well, so I learned the bow staff. Okay. And Ava picked the nunchucks. Oh. Jack also picked the bow staff, bow staff too. Okay, now these are these are things that you use to fight with or defend yourself or. Sometimes I guess you could. Okay. But it's m we we're gonna use it for like performance. Oh, performance. Okay. Not actually watching. Gotcha. Them. Okay. Very but good. I guess you could use the skills to if someone tries to get you and you have one. I guess. Yeah. But we're using it for performances. Okay. And because it's not actually sharp. None of it's sharp. Oh, okay. Except the nunchucks you could whack yourself with, but. Yeah. All right, so you have these things, and uh, yeah. So me and Jack picked the bow staff, and Ava picked the nunchucks. Okay. Nunchucks are really cool. Yeah. You know, you get to swing them around. Okay. And do flips and stuff. That's really cool. Anyways, well, today we're gonna be talk talking about the bow staff. The bow staff. Yeah. Okay. So the bow staff, when you do, when you use a bow staff. You keep your hands in one position, okay. and you keep it like that All right. for the whole time, okay. flipping it around. So, like almost like a baseball bat, kind of. Yeah, but you keep your hands like... Oh, separated? Right. Okay. Going to your head. Okay. And so your right hand is going to go... See, this is the stick. Yes, if you're frozen, you may try to... Uh, Reboot your laptop or your computer. Rebooting. It, it may it may be something I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. Who knows? So your right hand. So this is the stick thing. And your right hand goes like on the bottom of it, and your left hand goes on top of it. Okay. Yeah. And you keep some space in between it. And you keep it like that, right? You keep it in that position. Okay. Just like this. Hmm. Wait, that reminds me. <laughs> yeah. Of that scripture, Hebrews um three fourteen. Yeah. Well, it says, 
We have come to share in Christ if we indeed hold our original convictions firmly to the very end. So hanging on. Yeah, like have that faith. Like if you get a boa stick, you try it out, you hold on. Right. Or you have that faith, you hold on to the very end of your performance or the and, world. And, and, right, and so your performance is your life. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Hey, that's a pretty good analogy, Ella. How'd you yeah. think of that? Well, actually, so today we did school, right? Yeah. And Jack wrote the scripture on the whiteboard. This and one? And it was Hebrews 3.14. Okay. And and then it went with what we're learning of the bows. That's like... So you the light went off and you had a... So re read it again from your translation. We have come to share in Christ if we indeed hold our own conviction firmly to the very end. Oh, reboot, reboot my phone. Um, well, you could just sign out off of Facebook, Gail, and then sign back on to Facebook, or just kind of delete Facebook, not delete it, but mm -hmm. get off of it right now, but real quickly get back onto it, and that may, yeah. that may do it. Maybe. All right. Well. Interesting, Ellis. So anyway, so the, this boast that, the idea of it is to hang on. You can't let go of it and hang on until the performance is over. And the performance could be a long time, I guess. It could be several minutes or it could be a half an hour. I guess. So just like a bow staff, you hold on to your faith and never let go. Hold never, on to your faith. Never, ever let go. <laughs> I like that. So like if there's a... Let's, okay, let's say a bow staff. So in, in, a, in the real fighting world of, of that, of, of karate, uh, someone else is, is, is trying to hit you or trying to attack you, and you can't let go of your, of your uh, weapon. You have to hold it and, and, and use it and manipulate it and fight back with it, which is another analogy of what our faith is and what the Word of God is. Uh, there's one scripture in Hebrew, another place in Hebrews. It says that... Um, our, the word of God is, is like a sword. It's like a, it's a weapon. Actually, it's in the Ephesians. The word of God is a weapon that we use against the enemy. And so we have to hang on to the word of God. Basically, carry your Bible like it's a weapon. Because your Bible is a weapon yes. to evil, the devil, Satan, demons, all of right. that stuff. And, and ultimately... We're talking about our faith, right? Uh, so we have to hang on to our faith and, and never let go of our faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Even though we may get attacked or we may be in a battle, we have to hang on, just like with that bow staff. We have to hang on to that thing. Yeah. We have to hang on to our faith. That's not the only thing I learned, though, in karate. You learned something else? I learned two other things. How to kick and how to get away if someone grabs your wrist. <laughs> but. How to kick? Yeah. How do you kick? Hey, do you want to give us a little demonstration of this bow staff thing? I guess I could. Yeah, why don't you do that? I'll tilt the uh, camera if we have to. Well, I guess. So now we have a, we have Ella uh, do, giving a little presentation of the bow staff thing. Over here near the oh, you want to go over there? Go ahead. I guess I'll tell can, you where. Can you see yourself? Okay. That's good. So I don't have a real bow staff, so I'm gonna be using just a stick I found, which is actually a toy dog leash, but it works. So I'm not actually using a real bow stick because I don't have one. Okay, so your position on your hand, right hand under, left hand on top. So give some space in between and try to make it even on both sides, just like this. So you're gonna go, I guess, up, put it up, pull to your chest and down, but really quick. But it, it looks like you're going like this, but you're going up, kind of pull to your chest and down. So up, down, and when you step, you're gonna lunge to the person so you your left leg is going to be straight but
foot going down and your right leg is going to be a little bent. So you're going to lunge at the person and put, so you have it like from this to this to this, really fast. And you're going to go up and switch the body and when you go again, you're not going to put it on your shoulder, you're going to put it on your arm. And then you're just going to go back. So. Wow. <laughs> All right, very good, Ella. That, that's very good. I learned something there by watching all that little presentation. So anyway, with that uh, came the analogy that we have to hang on to our faith, and uh, and, and I would say even use our faith uh, as a as a, a weapon. Some, well, first of all, uh, that bow staff is is used for protection because if someone comes at you, you put that thing up and, and you block the attack. Uh, whether it's high or low or wh wherever it is. So let your faith be a, be a shield uh, against the attack of the enemy. And on the other hand, uh, if you get into a, a situation where your bow staff has to be a weapon against someone, where you could actually do some damage against someone, uh, let, your, let your faith and let the Word of God be a weapon uh, as it is. And so I wanted to... Do you have any more to read right now? No. Okay. So, so in Ephesians 6, it says, um, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, and we need a bow staff. This is the bow staff, the, the word of God. And so, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you could withstand in the evil day having done everything to stand. So stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Truth is found in the word of God. Um, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, cover your heart with the righteousness of Christ. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, wherever you go, uh, you're a missionary, you're a witness for the Lord. Uh, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you may be, may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take up the shield of faith. The shield of faith. We hide behind the word of God, and it's a shield that protects us like that bow staff. And uh, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So that bow staff could be used to protect and to attack as well. And... Uh, Above everything else, the Paul writes to pray always. Pray, pray always. Tony said you're a great communicator. Thank you, Tony. That's great. And instructor. Instructor. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Great instructor. <laughs> um, yeah. So what do you think about all that? That's pretty good. Yes, that is. So, yeah. So Hebrew, in Hebrew, hmm. it reminds us as Christians, to learn from Israel's mistakes. Oh. You know? Even though God saved them a lot of times, Yeah. they had hard hearts, and they wandered in rebellion. They certainly did. So, so once we are saved, we walk in faith, trust His word, and rest in His promise. Oh. Promise. Oh, I like that. Let me just say hi to Orville. Hey, Orville, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, I don't. I forget what scripture this is. Yeah. But it's um, if you live live by flesh, you will die. If you live by you spirit, by spirit, you will live. Right. If you are by spirit. Right. Right. So read, read those three things. That's important. Let's let's focus on those three words in particular. Walk in faith. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. Every day is an opportunity to walk in faith, to trust the Lord, to put our best foot forward. Uh, as we're walking, we're standing. You know, we're going forward. We're moving closer to God. And uh, so walk in faith. Uh, so you may have had, let's say, let's say today, 
you may have had some things you had to do today and uh, they were a little bit, you know, a little bit difficult to deal with. Maybe you had to go take care of a bill. Maybe you had to uh, go see a family member. Maybe something at work wasn't, wasn't happening right, the right way and you were a little anxious about that. But walk in faith. You know, with God, all things are possible and uh, he will give us the guidance and the, and the direction we need. He's just looking for a people that will trust him. So begin walking in faith. Lord, I don't know what my day is going to be like, but I'm giving you my day. I'm going to trust you to work it out for me. So Ashley, that, so this is like a scripture. Oh, yeah. And I read the scripture. I made like a, like a song. Oh, you did? It. Yeah? Yeah. You want to sing the song? Sure. Oh, it's boy. It's just that scripture, though. All right, we don't know the scripture though, do we? Um, well, it's it's in Hebrews, I think, and it's by like I'll I'll just sing it and see if you know it. All right, go ahead. Once we are saved, we walk by faith, day by day, trust His way. Oh, I like that. That's Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that. I'm gonna say walk in faith and see if there's a scripture that day says day, specifically that. Walk in faith day by day, trust his way, and we'll rest in his promise. All right. Well, there's a couple of scriptures. Hebrews 11, 1. Oh, I know that one. Mm -hmm. I guess that's uh, it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things uh, not seen. Uh, verse 6, without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. But wait, there's another one here from uh, Corinthians. Well, just search. Hebrews 3.14. That's it, what I did in them. Is that it? Okay, wait a minute. That's what I got it. I don't know. Okay, so it's 2 Corinthians 5.7. We walk by faith, not by sight. Oh, I, I know that. I've done that. <laughs> and, and, um, All right. Hebrews. Devotions, I've done that one. Hebrews, what is it? 3.13? 3.14. We just search that, and then we were just looking. It's like not Hebrews 3.13, but it's near. It's near there? Yeah. All right. Well, in any case, so walk in faith. Day by day. Day by day. Trust his word. And trust his word. In order to, to trust his word, we have to know his word. So knowing his word, you know, we, we spend time reading the Bible, meditating on it reading some study books along with it, going to church and hearing the pastor preach a message. Can I get an amen right there? Amen. <laughs> uh, going to uh, either Sunday school or Wednesday night in the Word Bible study or getting into a situation where we're learning the Word of God. Then we could trust the Word of God. And so whatever you know, whatever little bit you may know, you have to trust that, you know, and uh, put God first. And, and what's the last one? Rest in his promise. Rest in his promise. I, I don't think that's a part of it. I just think that's... Well, there is something in Hebrews. I think you were... that All that's in Hebrews, actually. Yeah. In Hebrews 4, it talks about resting the rest of the Lord, the, being in the rest. Like, uh, like uh, therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us... Fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us. Uh, the, blah, blah, blah. For we who have believed do enter that rest, just as he said. I, so I swore in my wrath, they shall, they shall not enter my rest. But if you believe in Christ, you will enter into his rest. So there is a rest in the Lord, meaning that Jesus paid the price for all of our sin. And we enter into Christ, and now Christ is at rest because he did what he had to do, and we benefit from that. Now we enter into his rest based on what he did, not based on what we did. All right, let's see what uh, Tony has to say. Can we see that? 
Twelve twenty-nine. Wow, it's almost time. Do we have another little part of this? No. Okay. Well, actually. Oh, well, I already said that. Well, I think, I, I think you have to do it again. Okay. If we don't hold on, we will live defeated. Ooh, ooh. If we don't hold, that's the whole point, isn't it? If you let go of that bow staff, you're oh, done. No. You're, hey. you're, 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 you have no chance of survival. If we let go of our faith, if we let go of the word, if we let go of, you know, Christian things, fellowship and worship and prayer, we have no safeguard and, and we're, we're up the creek without a paddle, so they say. And so uh, we want to encourage you today, uh, hang on to your faith. Let me read, uh, you can read Hebrews 3.14 one more time. Okay. We have come to share in Christ if we indeed hold on our original conviction firmly to the very end. So hang on to your original conviction that Jesus Christ is Lord and I need him in my life to cleanse me of my sin and to empower me to live a godly life in the midst of a crazy, wicked, perverse generation. So Orville says, even if our faith is as small as a mustard seed, I'm, we God will honor that. that about yes. In, and I brought one of mommy's rings that yeah. actually had a mustard seed in it. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a mustard seed is really tiny. And Jesus said, if you have that much faith, you could move a mountain, you know? Uh, meaning if you have a little bit of, as long as you have something, you know, you could do great things with your faith. And so our, our word today is a word of encouragement. Um, and I, I always go back to Philippians 1.6, uh, Orville and Tony, I know you know this from harvest time, but I remember we had the, the artist who wrote this song, he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it until that day. Uh, let your faith you know, let your faith produce good fruit. Uh, let your faith be cultivated and nurture your faith. Let, let your faith grow and develop. And uh, whatever, wherever you have right now, either a lot or a little, use it for the glory of God and trust God with your faith. Those three things are important. Walk in faith, trust in his word, and rest in his presence. Walk, trust, rest. Walk, trust, rest. The resting is very important. To just be... be, be convinced in your mind and heart and soul and spirit that I am with Christ and everything is going to be okay. He paid it all on Calvary. And that's the end of that story. Yeah. Ella, what do you want to say? One more thing before we pray and sign off today. Is something else on your heart today? Um, well, the three things you just said and then the fourth one. Which is? Which is you have to hold on, right? You have to. If you don't hold on, you're going to be defeated. Yeah. And it's not, it's not necessary to be defeated. We can if we let go. But God doesn't want us to let go. We need to hang on. Walk in faith, trust his word, rest in his promise, and hold on. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so let Tony... Uh, I don't know if it was Morris Chapman. I don't know who wrote that. I have to check that out. He who began a good work. I remember this artist came to Harvest Time and he, he wore a hat. And uh, he played the piano and, and that was one of the songs that he played because he wrote that song. So anyway. All right, Ella, thank you so much for sharing today. Uh, you may want to check out some karate moves, the bow staff and hanging on with two hands. The analogy is to hang on to your faith, hang on to the word, hang on to Jesus. Hang on to the body of Christ. Don't be defeated. And don't be defeated. If, if you know, Paul says, if we enter a race, an athlete buffets his body, trains, and fights in such a way that he wins, and we're we're gonna fight our good fight in such a way that we get the crown of glory one day. You know what's great about being with God? What's that? Well, he's amazing, first of all. He is. And you already know you're gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If God made you, if God made the world, if God made the beautiful sunset and sunrise, yes. he can sure win any battle. There you go. I love that. That's a good analogy. Yeah. Thank you for that. Tony, you're right. It was Terry Clark. That, that name definitely rings a bell. We had him at harvest time on like a Friday night one time or a Sunday night. Anyway. Well, that's 
pray and sign off. Let's pray and sign off. Ella, why don't you pray and then, why don't you just do the whole prayer and then I'll say goodbye. Okay. All right, let's pray one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. I hope you help us keep our eyes on you. Yes. And let us trust in your word, walk by faith, trust his word, and rest in your promise. And I hope that you send angels down us to protect us and to comfort us. I hope you truly sing this song over us. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We hope to see uh, many of you in church on Sunday, if not on live stream on Sunday. And uh, we'll talk again real soon. We love you. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye.